In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to turn any sketch or basic render into a very nice looking render using Photoshop. And I'm going to be making a basic model on Rhino so you can see how easy it is. First, I'm going to make the room. We do that by making a rectangle that's 40 feet by 40 feet. Then I'm going to offset that eight inches. That's going to be my wall on one side. In my 3D view, I'm going to go ahead and extrude that floor that I made, make it 12 inches. I'm going to grab that wall and extrude it, make it 14 feet. And now I can copy that floor slab and place it at the top. Now I have a basic room. Next, I'll clean up by deleting some of these lines that I won't need anymore. Now I'm going to go back to my top view and I'm going to copy the original square that I drew over about 50 feet. And I'm going to draw a line right down the middle to make it symmetrical. Next, I'm going to make a rectangle and I'm going to make it eight feet by 20 feet. Then I'm going to offset that eight inches. Then I'm going to offset that two inches and that's going to be my million. Next, I'm going to switch back to my 3D and I'm going to extrude this 12 inches. I'm going to grab that outside line and I'm going to extrude that 12 inches as well. Now I'm going to mirror that over to the other side. I could now grab these two elements that I've created and I can move them over to the room that I made. I'll move this one to the top. I'm going to delete this element from the floor slab using a command called Boolean Difference. And I'm going to do the same to the top. Next, I'm going to go to the front view, select everything I've made so far and make it 2D. I'm gonna grab that and move it over 50 feet. Now I'm gonna be able to make this middle element. I made a polyline, I offset it two inches, that's our mullion. I can grab this and using this point right here, place it on top of the room that I've created. I'll grab both lines that I made, extrude them eight inches. Now I grab the outside one and do the same. I select this wall, do the same boolean difference command and select the object in the middle and it creates an opening now. Now I have my mullion. I'll go ahead and delete everything else on the outside that I don't need anymore. Now that the basic model is made, I want to create a new layer called mullion. I'll make this layer red. We also want to make a new material called metal. Then we go back to our layers and we make sure that we add this new material that we made. Now that that's done, we want to select our mullions and we want to change their layer. Once we have our basic room made, now we want to add some basic lights to it. Under render, I click point light and I place that anywhere. I then adjust it in my views. This represents the sun. There's other ways to do the sun, but I want to make sure I get some harsh light. So this light will be the best. Once that's set, I'm going to copy that same light and place it inside the room just to make sure that our shadows aren't that dark. On this one though, we're going to turn down the intensity to about 20. Once that's done, I'm going to go inside the room that we created and I'm going to create a perspective. I'm going to make sure to save this view and I'm going to call it perspective one. I'm going to change some render settings, make sure that I get a good size and make sure I change this to final quality. This is important because if not, your shadows are gonna look very distorted and grainy. You also wanna make sure your DPI is set to at least 300. Once you're ready, you go to render and press render. Now, a lot of people tend to use V-Ray for Rhino and V-Ray is awesome, but sometimes we either don't have it or can't afford it. And so that's why I like doing this method on Photoshop. It also feels kind of creative using Photoshop, so that's why I prefer to use it, but it's really up to you how you do it. All right, now it's time to start Photoshopping. I've already brought the image into Photoshop. And one of the first things that we're gonna do here is that we're gonna select this mullion. I realized that I don't like it that much and we're gonna to get it out of the way. With everything collected, I control shift I to invert the selection and then I go ahead and press the mask button and then that's completely out of the way. Now for this next part, someone on my channel commented that I should look up Orid and to use that as a site next time I do one of these renderings. So I went on Google and I typed in Lake Orid and I found this picture of this cathedral called Saint Joven Canal. And I decided I would use this as the image of my backdrop. So first of all, I'm gonna change the name of this image. I'm gonna call it backdrop, place it under my other layer. We'll adjust it a little bit, but we'll really get into it later. Next, we're gonna create our floors and I brought this image of these wood panels. Once you bring in the layer, you wanna go ahead and press Control A to select everything and then Control C to copy it. Turn off this layer and make a new layer. Then we go to filter, vanishing point, and we're gonna create a vanishing point. Now, luckily I have this shadow here that has its own vanishing point. So it's really easy to figure out where I should draw these lines. If everything is blue, then everything looks good. If it was red like this, then that means something is wrong, but we pretty much got it right. Now that I've drawn that, I can grab these points and extend it all the way through. Now I can control V to import that image that we just copied. And I'm gonna control T to allow me to scale it up or down. I'm gonna make it kind of small and let's see how that looks. Once that's scaled down, you grab it and drop it onto your vanishing point. It's a little bit too small, so we're gonna undo that and make it just bigger. Once you have it set, you can hold control and move it over to copy an X panel. And once you're done, you press okay. Now we can hide this other layer that we had created. Notice how we lost that shadow that we brought in from Rhino? That's okay, we can just select the layer and then under normal, select multiply. Before we forget, we wanna make sure we save. Next, we wanna scale our background and make sure it fits properly. And I'm going to bring a second sky now to make sure that I fill out these other parts that are missing. We're going to go ahead and make sure we fix the scale. And as you can see, it looks pretty good. There's a difference right here in the color of the sky. And this has an issue here as well, but we'll fix those two in just a moment. 
So the first thing that we'll do is we'll grab this image here of the background and we'll change the saturation. We've got this part looking pretty good. There's still that line there, but what we're gonna do is we're simply just gonna mask it a little bit. So we click the layer, we click mask, we grab our paintbrush, make sure it's black, and we turn down the opacity a little bit. And just like that, it's looking pretty good. Next, we'll go back to this wooden layer that we made and we'll wanna make sure that we touch it up so that it looks good. We simply select the area we wanna remove. We control shift I to select the inverse. And then once the layer is selected, we just click the mask button and hide it. Now we select this area that we had created before and using the paint bucket tool and with white, we wanna make a new layer and we'll call that glass. We wanna make sure we change the opacity to around five. Now it's time to bring in a person or two. I've taken a couple pictures of myself and I've imported them into Photoshop as PNGs. We're gonna take this image and we're gonna use the back side to place on this side and then the front side is gonna be the reflection of myself. We can grab the version of myself that I'm calling reflection and we can place that behind the background. We could turn that off for now. Next, we're gonna wanna turn down the saturation a little bit of this here to make sure that it matches with the colors that are in the background. But before we do that, we wanna make sure we mess around with the curves a little bit. Now we can create a new layer adjustment and we'll select hue and saturation and bring the saturation slider down just a little bit. We could also add a contrast adjustment layer and bring up the contrast a little bit. This is before and this is after. Next we want to do the same with the people we bring into the scene just to make sure that they blend into it. So again we'll start by selecting curves. Make sure you press this button here so that it clips to the layer below. Click here, pick a dark point and start changing it until it matches the background. We could also create a contrast adjustment layer, clip it on and bring down the contrast a little bit as well as the brightness. Next, we have to make sure we blend this in and we're gonna do that with shadows. So create a new layer, right click, create a clipping mask, select a dark brush and paint over your subject. Now we can grab the eraser tool, make sure the opacity is set low and select a smaller brush. Now we can start to go around the edges and bring out some of those highlights from the sun that's coming out through the window. We wanna make sure we follow the profile of this light that's coming down. If you wanna make these shadows a little bit more dramatic, you just add an adjustment layer of contrast, make sure you clip it and bring down the brightness. Now we want to create a layer below this one and call it shadow. We'll grab a dark brush with low opacity, make sure it's a soft round brush, and we want to create a shadow beneath it. We can also select the layers I make up myself, duplicate it, convert it to a smart object, and place it under. Select image, adjustments, brightness, bring the brightness all the way down and the contrast all the way up. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and give it a little bit. Now I can bring down the opacity. Select the inverse, mask it, and do the same for the top part. Next, what we wanna do is cover up this area here and I'm gonna use some trees for that. If you wanna know where I'm grabbing these images from, just make sure you head over to my description and I'll have the link there. We wanna make sure we make this new tree match this one over here. We'll do that with a saturation adjustment layer. We also wanna add a curves adjustment layer. I've copied that same tree over a few times and now I'm gonna right click on all three of them and convert them to a smart object. And once again, I'll apply a hue and saturation adjustment layer and I'll bring that slider down a little bit, making sure that this is clipped on. I'm gonna go back to that glass layer that I made and I'm gonna switch it now to 20. I put all my layers into one group and now I'm gonna control alt shift E to copy that layer. I'm gonna open up that group again and bring this layer above the glass layer and I'm gonna clip it on. Now I can move this down just like that. And since obviously it doesn't fit right, there's parts missing, I'm just gonna cheat a little bit and bring this, make this bigger like this, and now I can adjust that. Now we're gonna turn on that old layer that I had of myself. We're gonna select it, and we're gonna switch it to screen. And to make the glass a little bit more reflective, or at least to give the illusion of that reflectivity, we're gonna create a new layer right above it. Choose a soft brush with a low opacity, and select the color white. Just draw some streaks over it. We wanna make sure that this is understood as glass as well. So we're gonna select this portion here. We're gonna clip this new layer and we're gonna paint it white. Now with this new layer created, we're gonna go back to our canvas group. We're gonna control Alt Shift E and this new layer, we're gonna bring it above the new layer that we created. And we're gonna right click and clip it. We're gonna also bring this down a little bit. Now we're gonna grab the layer that it's clipped to and bring down the opacity on it. We can make a mask on it and start to erase some of the areas of the edge just so it feels like it's blending in a little bit better. Now we're gonna create some joints to actually make this look like glass. So beneath my background, I'm gonna draw a dark line. I'm gonna call it layer joint. I'm gonna select this line, make sure it's five or lower and draw a line. Let's bring down the opacity to about 25. Now we can duplicate that same line and we'll overlay it a couple times. We could grab all three lines and make them one single smart object and copy it to the bottom. I brought in a second person just to make the render look a little bit more full. Make sure you get the scale right. Don't forget to add some shadows below. So create a layer, select a light brush, select a soft brush, low opacity, and a dark color, 
and draw a shadow below him. We could create a new group, we'll call these details, and we're going to place this just above our background layer. I'm going to bring in some birds just to give the image a little bit more life. I'm not sure that these are pigeons, but we'll, we'll just say they are. Bring down their opacity just a little bit. We could also place a tree at the top here just to add a little bit of contrast to the sky. As with everything, make sure you adjust the levels to make sure it blends in. We want to make sure we keep it realistic, so I'll bring a copy of that tree down to the bottom here and I'll make a shadow for it. We'll give it a little bit of a Gaussian blur so it blends in. Finally, we'll grab this layer that we brought in from Rhino and we're going to adjust the curves to make it a little bit brighter. That's before and that's after. Then finally, we can grab this group, select Control Alt Shift E, take that layer over to the camera raw filter. We're going to bring the texture up a little bit, but before we do that, let's zoom in, bring the texture up. We're going to bring the clarity up a little bit. We're going to bring the whites up. We're going to bring the shadows down a bit, the highlights down a bit. We're also going to bring down the contrast down a little bit. Next, we're going to click on the detail tab and we're going to bring up the sharpening just a little bit. If we do too much, this is what it looks like. It helps if you zoom in to look at this part. And finally, we're going to go to effects and we're also going to bring up the grain a bit. If we do too much, this is what it looks like. If we do too little, it looks the same. So I find that just a little bit is enough. Once you start noticing the difference, you want to bring it back down a little bit. This is our before and this is after. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this quick little demonstration. Make sure to head over to my description to find out ways that you can access this image for yourself as well support the channel. I'm Mooch. This is Pigeonhead Architecture. I'll see you down in the comments.